चल गया चल गया चल गया ये देखो बिस्मिल्लाहिर्रहमानिर्रहीम शुरू अल्लाह के बाबरकत नाम से जो बड़ा मेहरबान और नेहायत रहम करने वाला है डियर डिस्टिंगिश गेस्ट ऑनरेबल इनवाइटीज एंड लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन अस्सलाम वालेकुम माय सेल्फ राबील कदीर आई एम जैनुल आब्दीन फ्रॉम सेकंड ईयर बीडीएस इट गिव्स अस इमेंस प्लेजर to welcome you all at the 5th LUMS and 9th PPA International Dental Conference organized by Faculty of Dentistry, Lyakat University of Medical and Health Sciences, Jamshoro in collaboration with Pakistan Prostodontics Association. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now call the panel of experts for scientific session. Respected Professor Sayyid Nasir Ali Shah, Dean Khaber College of Dentistry, Peshawar. Respected Professor Mahmood Hussain, Head of Department and Professor of Prostodontics, Sindh Institute of Oral and Health Sciences, Karachi. Respected Associate Professor Dr. Abdul Bari Memon. Chairman, Department of Community Dentistry, B.B. Asfa Dental College, Larkana. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to deliver today's next lecture on management of dentofacial deformity, I would like to invite Professor Afif Umarzia. He is a professor and head of Department of Orthodontics at Margala Institute of Health Science, Islamabad. Sir, please come up on a stage. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, so it's it's always an honor to come to Hyderabad and be amongst a very dear friend, which is Abdul Jabbar, and talk in front of my teachers uh, because of whom we are what we are today. So not to forget Madam Nazia and Sarasa Felicia, who have taught us during the undergraduate years. So thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So I've asked uh, them for a wireless ma this mic because I can't seem to actually stand and talk to the audience. Uh, so the topic of today is management of dentofacial deformity, which is really, really close to my heart uh, because while in undergraduate years, we always take surgery as uh, the most plausible speciality of dentistry, which we think brings about a change, but after looking at all the presentations of the day, we can see that all specialities of dentistry actually contribute to the well-being of a patient, and it's always the teamwork which ensures a successful treatment outcome. Uh, it's a commendable effort by PPA in organizing this conference and the local organizers, which have made this event possible. I never start any presentation without giving uh, due importance to my mentor, which is Professor Amjad Mahmood. And he was supposed to be here as well, but unfortunately, due to his schedule, he couldn't make it. So we are coming in from Islamabad, which is, which is a beautiful city. <coughs> coming to the presentation. So what I'll be covering today is dentofacial deformity patients and their treatment goals, what kind of patients warrant orthognathic surgery, I'll be talking about orthognathic surgery in respect to the soft tissue paradigm that we all follow. The diagnosis, treatment planning, its steps, and then we'll discuss a few cases of ours which were only possible due to the teamwork that we always rely on, including many uh, consultants, amongst which few of them are here as well. So I'll be talking and coming to them later on. And then on Monday, we'll be taking an orthognathic course as well, uh, and we'll go into further details about 
the management of these cases. So treatment goals to begin with, first and foremost, it is the aesthetics. Aesthetics are the areas by which or by virtue of which the patient reports to us. This is why the patient comes to us and this is exactly where our diagnosis should focus on because this is what the patient sees in the mirror every day. We cannot rely on you know, the numbers given to us by the lateral CEF or uh, the readings of SNA, SNB, but it is what the face tells us. It is our duty as scientists, as orthodontists, prosthodontists to establish a functional occlusion and stabilize the periodontal health. And all of this needs to be stable over the rest of the years of the patient's life. That's our responsibility, co-responsibility. So aesthetics, function, and stability. These are the three main goals of any orthodontic procedure or any uh, restorative procedure per se. <clears throat> so the kind of patients that warrant orthognathic surgery, foremost, it is always the aesthetic and functional needs of the patient. It is definitely a clinical decision. Uh, we cannot justify any given treatment modality by relying on a lateral CEF reading that my SNA is this or my SNB is this. It would always be the soft tissue paradigm. Then it is the extent of the problem. So we need to be very, very sure and ascertain at the beginning of the treatment. If the problem is subtle, we will rely on orthodontics alone. If it is uh, of a greater extent, we would like to resort to a combined surgical and orthodontic treatment modality. For all the patients which require orthognathic surgery for their dentofacial deformity, we would always like to ensure, we must ensure that the growth has ceased. And in the end, we need to keep in mind that the result needs to be extremely st stable. So these are the kind of patients that we treat. Uh, for example, a burn patient, a hemimandibular hypertrophy patient, the facial deformity patients that we like to treat within the scope of combined orthodontics and orthognathic surgery treatment approach. Uh, it has taken approximately you know, a century for us to come on to the soft tissue paradigm because it is only the soft tissues which determine what kind of treatment must be rendered to the patient. It is never the dentition alone, it is never the numbers alone, it is what the face is telling us about the patient. So it's the soft tissues that determine what we are supposed to do. So the soft tissue paradigm tells us to look at the face in all three planes of spaces, which is macro aesthetics, the smile framework, we need to look at the smile of the patient, and then coming to the minute details about the patient. So as soon as a patient walks into our departments or clinics or wherever, whatever the clinical setting is, we need to look at the face from the front and ascertain if there's a facial asymmetry, is there balance between the right and left side, is it a long face or a short face, and then there are certain anthropometric findings or readings that we need to rely on such as the rule of fifths, which confers uh, harmony between the right and the left side. It is the frontal vertical thirds in which we divide the face in three halves. And these are basic areas in which we determine whether the patient, where the problem area is. This, these are simple anthropometric findings and readings. Then we always look at the incisal show at rest. This tells us if there's a problem in the vertical plane of space incisal show during smiling, the lip posture, what kind of lip posture is there, can the patient close her or her, his lips uh, competently or incompetently. So these are the basic things that we can note right when we look at the patient. Uh, yesterday when we reached uh, Karachi airport at 11 p.m., the first thing that Dr. Nan and myself we saw was a cleft patient and we were counseling right there on the airport that you need to go to this place. So we look at the patient and we can tell where the problem is. But we need to first set the eye on the face of the patient because that is what the patient sees and that is where we need to hit. Similarly, the lateral profile of the patient. This is where our treatment plans are made. 
We have not talked about Ceph. We have not, not talked about class two molar, class three molar relationship. We are just talking and looking at the face of the patient as orthodontists, as scientists. So the center picture is what we aim for. And the left and the right views are normally the kind of patients that we get in our departments or in our clinics. So this is the center is our goal. We tend to achieve a straight profile as I'll go move forward with my cases, I'll be able to prove this further. So for example, if we look at this patient, we can see from miles that there's an evident mandibular deficiency. Now, how, how will this patient report to us? He, will, he or she will always say, Mere upar ke daant Because Marie's can never see from the side. They always look at themselves in the front from the front. So this is an evident mandibular deficiency. So it's a simple mean to just drop a line, which is a zero meridian line, and we can very well imagine it's not the somewhat the maxillary teeth are prognathic or protrusive, but the major problem lies with the mandible. So if we take the upper teeth back in this patient, it would not be the right kind of direction for this particular patient. So similarly, we look at the mandibular plane, which is an easy way to do. Just put the mirror probe, a mirror handle, and you can assess whether it's a high angle patient or a low angle patient. Going forward, certain areas, nasolabial angle is an important area because it tells us whether to extract or whether not to extract. So in the patient on the left, I would not like to extract because the lip would further go back. But on, uh, looking at the patient on the right, I would definitely be extracting and taking the teeth backwards. So these are the basic and foremost things that we need to look at. Chin throat angle, of course, as we age, we get uh, a double chin sort of an appearance and this needs to be looked at as well. Mini aesthetics, it is the smile framework, which is very, very important. These are all basic things that we need to look at and this is what actually confers a successful outcome, keeping in mind the multidisciplinary treatment approach. So we, although the patient shown in this picture is close to finishing, but she was not happy with the smile aesthetics because there was too much of gum show in this patient. So what we look at is symmetry of the midlines, smile arc, buccal corridors. So we've all read this in, 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 in the textbooks, but we need to set our eye for diagnosing these clinically. So for example, a canted smile. So this patient, for example, for instance, the main concern would always be a teddy smile, for example, a canted smile. If you don't fix this, if you don't look at the smile in this view, you will never be able to sort this out. So the gum show during smiling and the raised incisal show. Excessive gingival display. Smile arc. So these are the things exactly. So if we look at this picture, which is the intraoral view of a patient, there is practically nothing wrong with this patient. But if you look at the extra oral view, when she smiles, there's a canted smile. So if you just look at the picture intra orally, there's nothing wrong with this patient, this, other than just a single tooth and cross bite. But if you look at the smile close up, there's a problem with the canted smile. You need to fix it. I'll show you in the later slides how we fixed it. And then in the last, we come to micro aesthetics, the connectors, the height to width ratios. So as orthodontists, we have the opportunity to change how the patient looks in three dimensions, which is the macro aesthetics, the smile, and the micro aesthetics. In summary, look for asymmetry in the frontal plane, the rule of fifths, the rule of thirds, basic measurements, basic readings, no x-rays, no SNA, SNB first, this needs to be ascertained. Incisal show at rest, during smiling, the gum show, the cant of occlusal plane, and this is where the plan is made for each and every patient. We are done with the planning here. <clears throat> so now moving on with the three-dimensional orthodontic planning. So the basic decisions that we need to make, first of all, surgery or no surgery extractions or no extractions, it's an irreversible decision. It's a, it has a major impact on the patient's lives. So when we are talking about taking the patient to the operation theater, we need to be very, very sure, and we need to rely on three-dimensional radiography, CBCT scans, the stereolithography, as Dr. Ali Chuktai and these people have 
very well mentioned about the scope of these modalities. Now they are very much available in Pakistan, so we need to rely on them. As a general rule, single jaw surgery in most instances is out. We, we don't do a mandibular setback anymore throughout the world because it's unstable. So whenever we need to rely on orthognathic surgery, we are in most instances looking at by jaw surgery. And we need to then decide about adjunctive procedures and growth cessation needs to be ensured. Lastly, it has to be a joint consensual decision between yourself and your partner who's your surgeon. So what are the four dimensions in orthodontics? Sagittal vertical transverse plane, we need to look at these planes. And last and most important is the time. We cannot have an orthodontic treatment that surpasses three and a half or four years of treatment. That is failed orthodontic treatment. You need to finish every case in a predictable amount of time. And then there are the steps of decompensation, forward planning in orthodontics, and then I'll be talking about some common mistakes. So four dimensions, as I've mentioned already. So what are the mistakes that we make in pre-surgical orthodontics? Whenever the problem is great and is of skeletal basis, please seek opinion or look towards your surgical options as well. Anterior open bite is notorious. It is unstable. We try sorting it out through surgical intervention as well. So dental midlines, of course, when it's a transverse plane discrepancy, we tend to align them surgically. Similarly, uh, you know, if there's a great extent of overjet, do not try to camouflage in such patients. Coming to the cases. So my case number one is a female patient, adult, a medical student, came with a chief complaint that her front teeth are forward. So if I look at this face, it is not the front upper teeth which are forward. It is actually the lower jaw which is deficient. I need to look at the face. I'm not looking at the ceph. And if I go intraorally, there's nothing wrong with the occlusion. It's a perfectly settled, socked in occlusion. So we decided to extract lower fours in this patient, create overjet, and then surgically advance the patient to finish in a three molar relationship. And this is what we get from pre-surgical to post-surgical. So if I had not looked at the face of the patient, I wouldn't have reached to this, 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 this end result. So another case. An already orthodontically uh, managed case, which, which was a failure in my opinion, because what the previous treatment had done was, you know, compensate them further. This was a sure shot surgical case. So we decompensated in the upper arch, retracted the upper teeth, created a reverse overjet, and then finished the occlusion in a class one relationship. And this is the profile that we get at the end of the patient. You cannot try to camouflage what cannot be camouflaged. You need to resort to your surgical colleagues. Similarly, the same patient in the frontal view. Another patient, so if I look at the face of this patient, it is a manly face in the profile view. I need to create a positive overjet and sort of, uh, you know, a maxillary advancement and a mandibular setback. So same patient lost this patient, a decompensated dentition. The patient went away, came back after a year. This was you know, what, how she reported, and then we decided not to treat the patient with an isolated mandibular setback. Please note we do not do isolated setbacks of the mandible. It's unstable. If you have to do a single jaw surgery, prefer doing a maxillary advancement rather than a mandibular setback. Mandibular setback isolated is unstable. There are loads and loads of trials on it. And we advanced the maxilla, and this is what we achieved in a matter of six to eight months. So again, coming to the patient that I showed earlier, this patient reported with the problem that my face is not balanced. So when you look at the close-up of the smile, there's a canted occlusal plane. So she was a labeled case of hemifacial microsomia uh, with a classification Krasinski's type 2A probably. So intraorally, she's compensated. There's no issue with the bite because the teeth tend to compensate for the skeletal issues. So if you look at the OPG, there's a marked difference between the right and the left side. So the left side is deficient as compared to the right side. 
If you have a close up, the right side of the left sided ramus is short. So we did a CT based simulation. This is where the 3D simulations they come in play. You're more accurate. You are uh, actually measuring in submillimeters. So it's 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 nice to rely on 3D uh, radiography rather than a two dimensional radiography. So we did a uh, simulation for it. We asked Dr. Adnan again to place a distractor. So this is where distraction osteogenesis comes in, where we create bone and we create soft tissues with it. So we actually elongated the left-sided ramus. So this is what we get after the distraction osteogenesis. And this is what I get as an orthodontist. And now I have been tasked with closing the bite. So I place two mini implants. I start extruding the lower upper left segment, close the bite somewhat, prepare the patient for a second stage surgery. This shows how the bone consolidated. And this is for her to be prepared for a second stage surgery. So we do again the predictions, uh, have a second stage surgery, a differential impaction on the right side, and a vertical ramus on the left side. And this is the finished product and a class one occlusion at the end of the day. So this was treated under 26, 27, in, in 20, within 27 months of total treatment. And these are the gonial angles, which are balanced. So pre-op to post-distraction to pre-second state surgery, and the last is the finished product. And this is what she sent to Dr. Adnan, not me. <laughs> Another patient, so reported with an evident facial asymmetry. And this is, she reports that this developed in the last six months. So the most probable diagnosis was a hemimandibular hypertrophy. Hemimandibular hypertrophy has a, uh, you know, sort of propensity to occur in female patients, late teens. Uh, and look what it, it has done intraorally. It's a rapidly growing uh, right-sided maxilla, which has created an open bite on this side. So. Whenever it's a progressive deformity, you need to go in immediately and do a condylectomy, get the growth center removed. So this is post-condylectomy. I start with my orthodontics, close the spaces, place an implant on the left side to intrude and buckly flare the lower left segment, try to correct the canted occlusal plane, prepare her for second stage surgery, and this is what we get at the end of the treatment. She got married, had a kid, and of course, gained some weight. So this is her. Uh, and when we sent the uh, specimen to the lab, it was not hemimandibular hypertrophy. It was a tumor of osteochondroma of the zygomatic arch. So this is what we got. And this is only possible with the teamwork. So this is my last case. I hope I'm not running very late on time. Uh, so my recent developed, recently developed love for surgery first, or probably, I don't know if it's a midlife crisis or something. So I need to finish my cases quickly. That's what I want to do now. I've been practicing exclusive orthodontics mm -hmm. for the last 16 years now. I'm not that old, but you know, I started really early in college days. <laughs> so I want to finish my cases with, within less with, with lesser time. I don't like orthodontics going beyond two and a half years, three years. I consider that to be failed orthodontics, to be honest. And that's what I tell my residents also. Three years is other key orthodontics come at There's a problem with diagnosis, there's a problem with mechanics, there's a problem, this there's a problem. So this patient, look at this patient. So as I see from the face, it's a class two. Uh, if we go intraorally, there's a seven to eight millimeters of overjet, uh, class two buccal occlusion. Uh, this is the OPG, the lateral ceph. You can appreciate the overjet and a low angle tendency of this patient. So we did a surgery first approach. So I asked my surgeon to perform a mandibular advancement on this patient. This is post, immediately post uh, surgery, first visit, one month. Two months, four months, six months, eight months he's debonded. So I don't like to prolong the treatment. I like to do surgery first. Why? 
it's because it's fulfilling. The patient goes out. You know, you're done with your orthodontics. Had I done a pre-surgical assessment going on to heavier wires, it would have taken a year or so. Now we try doing surgery first in majority of our patients because it is quick. The teeth move faster. So that's, that's my recently found love actually. So this is the patient post-surgery. We finished in eight to nine months. So this is in post-debonding. So I would like to conclude. It's the teamwork. And coming together is a beginning in, 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 such, in such cases. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. I thank you all for your patient listening. If there are any questions, I'll, I'll be more than happy to answer, please. Ya to sab samaj aagaya ya kuch nahi samaj aaya. Is there any question? Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. To deliver next lecture on mono implant placement and immediate loading going with the mother nature, I would like to invite, okay wait, To deliver today's next lecture on distraction osteogenesis, I would call upon Professor Nurul Wahab. He is Professor and Head of Department of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery, College of Dentistry, Zauddin University. Sir, please come upon the stage. Thank you for the kind introduction. I've been asked, the, there are 20 minutes only, so I will try to finish in 20 minutes. And the topic of today is destruction osteogenesis. One of the important topics, uh, as Dr. Afif was there before he started the orthognathic surgery, but now we have the destruction option and there are the limitation of orthognathic surgery. Before uh, announcement, I would like to invite those people who are interested in surgery. We have upcoming uh, course which is on the cadaveric in Egypt. If somebody is interested, he or, more, he or she is more welcome for this uh, cadaveric course which is on orthognathic surgery and facial aesthetic, which will be held in 5th or 6th of March in Egypt. <coughs> Destruction of osteogenesis is a biological process of new bone formation between the surface of osteotomized bones that is separated from each other by incremental movement. This first concept was came by the Lazarov. Lazarov was an orthopedic surgeon. What he did, he did osteotomy of the long bone and he increased the length of the leg. So that concept is now in the dentistry or maxillofacial surgery, worked for the mandible, maxilla in different part of the orofacial region. There are different indications of the orthognathic uh, destruction of osteogenesis in the mandible. We can uh, 
increase at the length of the soft tissue and the hard tissue. It could be the ramus, alveolar bone, segmental, transfer deficiency, obstructive sleep apnea, and the temporomandibular joint and calluses. The one could be the uh, ramus uh, deficiency you can see here. And this slide, I hope this works. I don't know, it's point is not working. You can see this arrow again, there the deficiency of the bone, vertical and horizontal in the ramus. And could be the, you can use the distraction for the alveolar bone, uh, segmental osteoarthritis. You can do the transfer deficiency, can be improved with the distraction. And you can, you can guide the whole bone with the distraction moving right to left. And if you have the patient like the complete of the mandible is a bit deficient from the ramus, from the angle to angle, this is the example of another patient with having the deficiency and you can use this patient for the facial asymmetry and that is the temporomandible joint in callosity so to produce a asymmetry and the patient with the obstructive sleep apnea. Patient which have been uh, born with a congenital defect or the like, different syndrome where the periroban is one of the sequence you can see here the mandible is a bit deficient and which can be improved with the destruction osteogenesis. Uh, destruction osteogenesis is the pra practically point of view. There, when we have the large skeletal movement have been needed, like we have three important indications that a large movement, difficult vector, and compromised soft tissue. If you, if you need a soft tissue, you need the destruction. Only orthognathic will not help. And the patient is not willing for the bone graft, and the patient is not having the good candidate for the bone graft due to the anatomical variation. Type of district, there are different type of district. I mean, if you have a lot of if you concentrate for 2 minutes, you will be able to get it. So that could be external and it could be internal. You can use it to tooth and you could use the bone to bone and it could be the combination of both. So the laser off concept was there are different stages of the destruction. Osteotomy of the bone with the periosteal st minimum stripping of the periosteum. Then the latency phase, that is the 3 to 5, 7 days, different depend based on age of the patient. Then activation phase, we do start the activation, destruction, consolidation and remodeling of the bone. And of course, removal of these uh, destruction. Then destruction could be used intraorally and extraorally if you have the device, whatever devices are available. And you can define the vector. Abne de vector, first of all, is co define kind of like you want interior posterior movement or you want the destruct vertical movement or you need the combination of both. So you need the distraction should be first Vector planning is the most important based on the patient. You can change the plan based like, you see this patient can have the movement can be vertical, interior, posterior, can you, and there could be the combination of interior, posterior, and vertical. So you can do the cut based on where the movement you require. So the first step is the osteotomy. First, you have to do the osteotomy. This may point you that first you have to distractor ko open karna. And uh, you apply the distractor first and you make a line and then you slightly open depend how much which kind of uh, st uh, instrument you are using if you are using the burr you can use the you know make the gap larger if you are using the saw the micro gap can be worked first apply the distracted and you have to determine the position of this vector and then you have to do the cut based on where you have been planned and then you once you complete your cut you start the movement of distractor and you see it is moving or not, the district is moving or not. Then you leave for the latency period and then you start the destruction. So this is the video, if I, I hope it will work. So first you determine the vector, number one. Then what you do, you have to give the incision and you have preserved the important sector if you are doing the extra oral. Intra oral may be more easier if you have the armamentarium. You preserve the facial nerve, of course, one of the important structure you have to preserve the facial nerve. And you know the deep fascia, you have to identify the deep fascia. Lift it up, you will preserve the facial nerve. The marginal mandibular nerve come up if you're placing at the angle of mandible. So you have to identify the pterygomesoteric sling. This is the most important thing is that you have to close it back. So pterygomesoteric sling identification, and then you have to strip it slowly and gradually. Once you strip it, expose the complete bone, apply the distractor, cut, and then you have to do the osteotomy should be completed. So you have to apply the destructor first and you have to determine where you have to give the cut. Once you determine where you have the cut, then you have to remove the destructor again. So two or three screw on the east side and 
you have to complete your cut. So slowly and gradually, of course, once you complete your uh, cut superiorly, inferiorly, then you have to do the fracture of the segment. So you have to expose completely. Line has been determined, you have put the distractor, do the osteotomy, superiorly inferior. You have to know where the inferior nerve is there. You have being, being a surgeon, you should know. You have to preserve the inferior with the nerve. So you complete your cut superiorly and inferiorly in outer cortex. And then the thin segment, you have to do the, the fracture of the segment. So once you complete your cut, you, you can use the osteotomy. You should not be in hurry. If you are in a hurry in your life, in surgery, you will do the mess up. You will completely fracture the bone. So you should not be in hurry. Whatever kind of procedure you are doing, a surgery, operative, whatever, orthogonetic surgery, whatever, you should not be in a hurry. So osteotomy should be completed and you should apply the distractor. And once you apply the distractor, you should move it and check the segment is moving or not. Of course, you should know where the distractor should be placed, minimum of five screws on each side. And once you complete, you should start the movement superiorly and inferiorly and complete the fracture, move the segment, and you start the distractor. Now you can see the, here the fracture is moving. You see with this arrow, this uh, is moving. Laser pin, calm correct. Yes, it's moving. So now this fragment is moving. So it, you are sure the fracture completely fractured. And you have to close it back, of course. You have to close it back, leave it for the lat latency period. And you should know how much turn you should do the movement. For the adult, we can use one millimeter. For the children, we can up to two millimeter per day. So that this fragment will go back and leave it for the latency period. So once you close it back, of course, you have to suture it back. And of course, I have told you, the pterygomesoteric sling, you have to close it back. It's an important role. And periostrum should be intact. You should minimum stripping of the periostrum. That is giving the good blood supply of the bone. Close it. And, and start the destruction after uh, five to seven days. So, so this is a different guideline, how much destruction you should do for which children, whatever, you know, it's all written in the books. Advantage is long-term stability, less trauma to the temporomandibular joint, decrease the neurosensory complication. There are the disadvantages. disadvantages. This is the first case of this patient you can see here that there is a defect. There is no chain, no uh, floor of the mouth, and you can see in the x-ray, the bone is lost from angle to angle. What is it? What is your option? You think about the fibula? No. You can't do the fibula in this patient because this patient has paranoid magnus. If you see the angiography of this patient, you cannot place the bone graft because this patient has paranoid magnus. You lose the legs. You can see in the angiography, this is you doing the before the uh, fibula flap. So the destruction was the option. So we start with destruction, starting the movement destruction. Destruction ka fayda kya hoga? Soft tissue bhi grow karega and along with the bone. So you can see here the destruction. The bone is completely being moved forward on the right side and the left side. And of course, destruction is along with the phases. You can see the, the soft tissue has been improved. It's, if you see preoperatively, because there was no option. Fibula, we can't do the fibula for this patient. So destruction would, would be the best option. And you can see the bone, the pre-operally there was no bone. And you can see post-operally there the bone is sufficient bone, which is now ready for the implant. The, the, another patient, you can see this patient in the temp temporal mandible joint in callosity. The previous old concept was that you first remove the ga gap orthoplasty and then you start the orthognathic surgery destruction. The, the option now is that you start with the destruction first. In this patient, you can see the facial asymmetry is there. So where this facial asymmetry start, you can see the occlusion limited, zero mouth opening is there. Start with destruction, movement is started, destruction movement start, and you should see the facial symmetry being controlled. And of course, then you'll need to, the open bite has been created, and you have to control the open bite. The destruction should be removed, you start the orthognathy, of course, you have to do the concomitant orthognathic surgery, genoplasty, ramus osteotomy, and sagittal split osteotomy, move this bone. Still, the patient, the symmetry is improved. There is an edema post-operatively. And the last but not the least, a smaller defect can be improved with small bone graft. So the pre-op and the post-op picture, you can compare the pre-op. This is the pre-op picture on the left side, and the right side, you can see the, the post-op picture. The distraction, power of the distraction, 
and of, the, of course the orthognathic surgery. The sleep apnea has been improved, of course. You can see the chin preoperatively, the postoperatively. And from the other angle, you can see, you know, the chin has been forward, the symmetry has been improved, and the buccal depression has been improved with the bone graft. The occlusion is okay. Patient is happy with the occlusion. Another patient with a temporomandibular joint and calcium bilateral. You can see the patient ha came with a sleep apnea. So what we decide first do the destruction first. Start with the destruction. Leave the grab out of the uh, temporal material joint bone. Start with the destruction. Destruction started, move forward. And you can see the mouth opening has been, you know, there is the interior joint developed. What do we have to do? We have the concept of AOCMF callus formation. I hope this video will work again. So the callus molding you should do, you should know the AOCMF concept, acute callus manipulation if needed fixation. These are the articles with my friend. Uh, two of my friends are there, uh, everybody know them. So we had a lot of discussion on the destruction every time. The post-op uh, patient, uh, photograph the patient, the pre-op, you can see here, and the post-op picture of the same patient. You can see from the other angle, you can see the bone formation, the quality of the bone. Aap ki bone is like a natural bone. Ki hai. No need of any bone graft. You can see patient ka sleep Pattern dictate improve. Airway aapko nazar aara hai. Yaha pe airway is improved. You can see the patient can breathe now normally. So give the good breath to the patient. And you can see the last thing that we have to do about the gap arthroplasty destruction ke baad aapne gap arthroplasty karni hai aur mouth aapne bhi improve karni hai. So and the orthodontic treatment of course we need the orthodontic. So pre-op again and the post-op still improving and the mouth opening ke saath saath aapne uska Function bhi aapne dekhna hai ki joint is moving properly, unilaterally, bilaterally, occlusion is ki thik hai, aesthetic is improved, airway is improved. So take home message. Consider the movement large, the destruction when the large skeletal movement is required. Large and difficult vector and the compromised tissue is there. So you need the stability for the longer duration. Because orthognathic surgery having the relapse, but destruction, there is minimum chance there is no relapse. Practical indication of destruction or osteoporosis would be the craniofacial syndrome, TMJ and callosis in the cleft patient. Of course, you should keep in mind the cost. And functional occlusion is one of the goals should be there. And when the key is the destruction is the vector. And of course, you should be the combination with the soft and hard tissue with the destruction gives the good role. Thank you very much for your patience. If there is any question, I'm there. Dr. Afif said, everything comes to understand, I think everything comes to understand. Or everything comes to understand, I don't think anything comes to understand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. To deliver today's next lecture on role of submental island for oral cancer and reconstruction, I would like to invite Dr. Sadiq Ali. He's Associate Professor, Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery, Lahore University. Sir, please come on stage and deliver your lecture.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, first of all, I'm very thankful to the organizers for inviting me here today. And uh, yesterday, a day back, we were watching a movie here, documentary about the LAMS that LAMS is the second oldest institution in Pakistan. So many of our junior colleagues might be not familiar with the, this, the name of this institution. This is the first and oldest institution in this part of the subcontinent. And it has played a vital role in development of all other institutions in Pakistan. It has produced uh, key figures, uh, prominent leaders in dentistry who are uh, serving nationally as internationally. And the credit goes to the great teachers of this institution. Uh, some are sitting in front of me, Professor Nazir Yazdani, Professor Asif Ali Shah, uh, Brigadier Azad, Dr. Faria Bukhari is here, and many others like uh, Professor Waraj, Dr. Adnan Ali Shah, Professor Saeed, Professor B.A. Yazdani, late, Professor Tariq Zaman, late, and all credit goes to these teachers who have produced the prominent figures in dentistry. Coming back to the topic, my topic for today's discussion is submental island flare. It's a really a workhorse for the reconstruction of maxillofacial defects. Previously, it was considered that the radial forearm artery flare was the gold standard for reconstruction, but now this flare has replaced all the free flaps. So outline is introduction, surgical anatomy, indications, contraindication, medical lengthening procedures, advantages, disadvantages, and uh, we will discuss some cases. So this flap was introduced by Martin et al. in 1993, based on the name itself indicates based on the submental artery, uh, which is a branch of facial artery. And dependent, depending upon the tissue type which we are selecting, it may be the facial maybe osteocutaneous, maybe uh, myocutaneous. So it depends, it depends which tissue you are selecting. So the, the bulk of this, this uh, flap is very less, so if we need a bulky tissue, we are adding the anterior belly of digastric muscle as well as the myelohyde. There are two types. One is uh, orthograde type and another one is reversal type. So orthograde we are using in the lower face, reconstruction of lower face, the oral cavity, the tongue and, and uh, soft palate. But the reversal type based on superiorly on the, on the angular artery that is for the reconstruction of the middle third of the face. So submental artery supplies a large skin panel, 10 into 16 centimeter. You see a big panel we can achieve for the reconstruction. Then the vascular pad, pad, pedicle has a length of 6 to 8 centimeters and 1.5 millimeter in width. The width of the flap determines the skin pinch test. You see this one. You see this one. A simple test, we pinch this, the submandibular tissue for reapproximation. From this, we can judge how much tissue we can take and what are our limitations. The facial artery is a branch of external carotid artery. If you see here, it is having two bands. One is here, another is here. So in the, in the lengthening procedures, it can give us four centimeter additional length for the reconstruction. Submental artery is a branch of uh, facial artery, you see from here. This, this is the submental artery. It is having five branches and 60% of the patient, it is supplying the floor of the mouth and the myelohyde muscle. So the three structures which are very important for us is submental artery, submental vein, and a marginal mandibular uh, nerve to preserve the functions of the lower lip. So here is the marginal mandibular nerve. Here is the 
इस पे भी नहीं दिखा रहा है इस पे भी नहीं दिखा रहा इस पे भी नहीं दिखा रहा दिखाई वगैरह है ये देखो ना ये वाला क्या चीज इसको चलाएं वगैरह एक मिनट ये है ये लेदर है नाउ इट विल वर्क ठीक है थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच सर so this is the marginal mandibular nerve which is more important to preserve the uh, functions of the lower lip indications any defects in the oral cavity or the maxillofacial region that there is either lower part of the face or the middle part of the face contraindications if the artery or the vein is facial artery or the vein is involved in the tumor we cannot use this flap or if the level uh, level 1a and level 1b nodes are involved we cannot use this flap but controversy is there if if a good nodal clearance is there we can use this one and uh, heavy beard growth the only drawback of this flap is beard growth in the flap gaining additional length if we ligate this you see this one if we ligate the facial artery and vein above the origin of the submental flap submental uh, uh, submental vessel here above it if we ligate this vessel and if we incorporate the tendon of the um, uh, digastric muscle and the anterior belly of digastric detachment from the mandible it gives us additional length advantages of this flap is it has reduced the hospital stay reduced the icu need no need of icu admission and uh, it has reduced the financial burden on patient and uh, uh, it's it's a, it's a reliable flap and uh, it's a, is a very simple to reflect in uh, in setting so the drawbacks here we have already discussed that 1a and 1b lymph nodes is a controversy the chances of recurrence in this area and radiotherapy also is a source of failure for this flap bulk issues we can incorporate the muscle uh, the mylohyoid muscle and the anterior belly of digastric it gives us little more bulk so the drawback here you see the uh, you see the hair growth inside the oral cavity but we can control this through the lasers through the manual plugging of the hair or by the razors or 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 uh, uh trimmers so this is our case number 1 you see the there is a uh huge tumor of the tongue this is a marking for surgical marking and then the section of uh, of the tumor then reflection of a flap and a pedicle and this is inserting of a flap and this is the closure you see this this is giving a ideal look for the reconstruction of a tongue and extra oral if you see here there is no not much not visible defect here case two again a tongue tumor there you see uh, the tumor up there and the reflection of a flap and then then inserting and reconstruction of the lateral border of the tongue this is post op this is another case uh squamous cell carcinoma of buccal mucosa extra oral as well as intraoral defect you see here a reflection of a flap and then inserting inside reconstruction of a buccal mucosa inside and the rest of the flap is outside you see the same color matching and this is the third case again the a squamous cell carcinoma of the cheek again the half of the flap is inside and half is outside this is the fourth case again there's a tongue tumor huge tongue tumor up there and the reconstruction with the submental flap so squamous cell carcinoma of uh, left mandible we have dissected the mandible and reconstruct it with the submental flap again
So again, a tumor of the uh, tongue and reflection of a flame, then reconstruction. You see here in the skin, half of most, most of the tongue has gone. And it's an involved by the tumor. And in this one, a small tag was left behind and we have reconstructed with the flap and nearly total tongue was reconstructed in this case. There's a tumor in the anterior mandible, resection of a tumor, surgical marking, then the reconstruction of the anterior mandible with this flap. The hair growth is there, but uh, after some time, a year or more, there will be uh, no hair, no more hair growth in this, 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 this flap. Another case of ameloblastoma, posterior mandible, in the retromolar area uh, of a young, uh, young guy. Again, it was reconstructed with the submental flap. In this case we have operated last week at University Teaching Hospital, uh, a case of orontogenic myxoma. You see the displacement of tooth and the tumor inside. And we have resected the mandible, given, and you see here the marking, the resection of a mandible, reconstruction with a, uh, we have given a reconstruction plate, and soft tissue reconstruction was with the submental flap. You see a lingual sulcus and the buccal sulcus here is very nicely uh, made. See the intraoral uh, picture after three days. It's a picture after three days of surgery. So this again, a young guy with ischemic cell carcinoma of uh, right cheek. See, we have removed all this tumor from outside as well as inside of the mouth, and this is the flap and we have reconstructed intraoral defect with the same flap and the excess flap which was there available, we have inverted and fixed outside the face. And uh, you see after seven days, the hair growth is there and even the, the beard line is the same. So this flap is, is a wonderful flap, a wonderful flap for reconstruction of maxillofacial defects. Conclusion is it is reliable single stage surgery uh, short operative time, low, low cost for, uh, low financial cost for patient, short hospital stay, uh, and uh, reduced donor side morbidity, uh, satisfactory cos and cosmetic appearance. This is our team. Uh, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to Professor Riaz Baraj, Professor Shfaqul Rahim, and uh, Dr. Abdullah Khan. Thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you very much. It is a post lunch session, so questions are not coming because uh, might be after lunch most of the audience uh, they are uh, drow feeling drowsy, so there is no question. This post lunch session is also called graveyard session because everyone. Thank you so much, sir to deliver next lecture on mono implant placement and immediate loading going with mother nature i would like to invite brigadier azad ali azad he is a convener faculty of prosthodontics at cpsp consultant prosthodontist implantologist azad dental college islamabad pakistan
उसको बैठो ये तरफ
Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Nuru Bahav, for the help. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, the President PPA, our senior faculty, uh, senior faculty member from local university, delegates. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, at this forum. Uh, today's topic is a bit different. I think you had an inoculation of uh, mono implants last day. There was a lecture. Uh, today I will be highlighting on the same and uh, inshallah I'll try to finish within stipulated 20, 20 minutes. So after our parents, we should remember our parents' institutes. I started from the great Nishtha Medical College, then the College of Physician Surgeons was very kind to us, our fraternity, uh, to have our footsteps uh, in the profession. Uh, I had the opportunity to be trained under late, great Professor Tariq Zaman Ahmed and Professor Dr. Nadia Ajdani, our living legend, at the Mount Pensy College of Dentistry. Then uh, Armed Forces was kind enough to send me to Murmur University for an implants course, and Army Medical College and AFID are the institutes where I rendered most of my service. Coming back to the basics, periodontal disease is probably the most common dental disease, and due to the systemic health concerns, local concerns, neglect, lack of oral hygiene maintenance, uh, delay in the treatment, it is very progressive while it damages the bone. And bone is an important asset when we talk about implants. We talk about sinus lifting, we talk about uh, bone grafting, soft tissue management procedures, while the tissue damage was there happening and the periodontal, periodontal disease we all know is notorious for it. Look at the level of damage. Uh, if you see on the right side uh, where the arrow is pointing, only one third of the bone is left, rest all has gradually been uh, damaged and that's a great loss. It is said that dental treatment is not costly, which is in fact very costly, uh, but the neglect and the delay makes it costly. Then we are familiar with the caries. If not managed, it will lead to irreparable damage to the tooth. Endophilures. Endodontics is a field that the prosthodontists, they rely on. If the endo is not good, endo is not optimal, any prosthodontic treatment will fail. That's why we are critical in supporting our endo colleagues to do the perfect endo. And when the endo failures are there, uh, tooth loss is sometimes inevitable. And rarely the fractures of the teeth are not manageable and tooth loss has to be there. We have been providing implants for the past 40, 50 years. And it was basically an attempt to copy the mother nature. Less than periodontal ligament, most of the things have been copied. As the nature loads the bone through the root, we have tried in the same way. But for the past four or five decades, we have noticed that most of the complications of the implant are around the neck of the implant. Crestal bone loss. Implants is, is a model for our education, I, I believe. The duplication of the knowledge was very quick. Newer techniques, induction was very quick. Newer materials, newer equipment, newer concepts. They emerged and re-emerged. Uh, my senior colleagues would uh, bear me out. There was a concept of epithelial seeding. We, we used to read that if we do implant flaplessly, epithelial cells will go in the osteotomy site and like epithelial rest of melasses, they may lead to cystic formations there. But the concept died down. Then for the past two decades, we have been listening and practicing platform switching to prevent the uh, crystal bone loss. Today, that concept is also on the downside. 
and complications with the conventional implants are well known and mostly these happen around the neck of the tooth. Screw fractures, implant fractures, crestal bone loss and a vicious cycle of bone loss periimplantitis is all well known. The micro gap, there are scores of articles in the literature today telling us that maybe one odd uh, abutment system, Moosko system, may be having lesser uh, chances of the micro gap, but the micro gap between the abutment and the implant leads to food collection, pumping action of the loading of the t uh, implant leads to spread of the degradation products into the sulcus and the crestal bone loss is usually inevitable. Then the fracture of the implants, secure fractures, uh, failures at the neck of the implant, mechanical failures, mostly happen with the narrow implants and we do use narrow implants in many of the situations. Uh, this is a video uh, which shows, you can read out and it's a I think learning material for home. Uh, this gentleman showed by videography that how the micro movements occur. If you wish, may I slide Saska? It's not possible here right now. So the micro movement will lead to pumping of the degradation products into the sulcus and a vicious circle of peri-implantitis starts which is unending. Crestal bone loss has been well reported and scores of articles are there in the literature. Everybody is familiar with it. If we talk about the mother nat nature, uh, the tooth was made as a one unit. The crown and roots were never separate. Even while we are extracting a tooth, surgeons would always prefer to remove the tooth as one piece. Why we inculcate a connection there? if we can avoid that. Mono implants are one piece implants. Many implant companies are promoting it. I am not promoting any company, but they are of various types. They are uh, uh, surface enhanced. They are smooth implants also. Now the smooth implants, as you can see on the uh, left side of the slide, they do not follow the OCU concept of the osseo integration. They will simply engage the cortical bone and a woven bone will form. And it has been proven with longitudinal research studies that these implants, if they are loaded immediately, they, they form a better bone. And those concepts, they have been taken from the orthopedics, their practices. Mono implants can be bent once and especially in the anterior region, but even in the premolar region, they can be bent. Even in the tooth number seven region, I will show that they can be bent and they can be utilized. Look at the pterygoid implant. Mono implant placed, the neck goes through the soft mucosa. It involves the pterygoid plate and you can bend the neck once up to 25 degrees to make it parallel to the remaining implants. And it's a proven thing, you can immediately load it. This is the area where we used to do the sinus liftings. You lift the sinus, leave it for four months, then go for the conventional implant placement. Now, with the help of mono implants, you can place longer implants anterior to the sinus and one or two implants even posterior to the sinus involving the pterygoid plate and bypassing the need for sinus lifting. So mechanical strength of the one piece implants is better. Marginal bone loss is not there. The longitudinal studies for 10 years, they have shown it. Thank you. Charging. Thank you. So multiple surgical visits are not required. You extract the tooth under the same local anesthesia. You place an implant and you can take a record. You can apply it in impression coping, uh, make the cast, or you can apply a, a scan body. Immediately digitally scan it, send the image to the lab, and with, after four, four hours, six hours, you can place temporary crowns over that, there. So there is no connection and those, there are no chances of failures at the connection level. 
final count margins are controlled by the clinician, by the depth of the placement of the implant. Uh, you can modify the abutments, so the basic principles of the crown and bridge and temporization they follow here. Secondary components are not required, so patient visits and in 24 hours patient can go back and after 6 months, 8 months, 1 year can return to replace those temporary crowns with the permanent ones. Narrow edentulous ridges is one option, especially the crystal bone where we used to need the bone grafting. Remember bone grafting outside the envelope of the, the structure of the mandible or the maxilla will always fail. Within the envelope of the structure, it can be successful, but it's costly, it is traumatic, it prolongs uh, the treatment, and uh, it's tiresome for the dentist also. So these implants have narrow necks, polished necks, which emerge through the soft tissue, and the engagement by the threads is down there. You immediately extract the tooth. There's no need for 3D CBCT even in certain cases because you are removing the tooth and the mother nature has provided you the guidance to cortical, all around cortical bone and at the apex there is cortical bone also. That bone has been created by the nature by the loads of the tooth at the apex. So you engage 3 millimeter of the apical bone and the implant will be firm, stable and the healing will be very simple. With my experience in the past two years, I think in the past two years, we have done around 1,000 implants, uh, mono implants, and simple tooth extraction will be more troublesome for the patient rather than when you place an implant there. The clot becomes firm very soon because inside is the implant, and out the bone is there outside. There will be no bleeding. Stitching is even not required in most of the cases. So, as I said, the extraction socket is a guidance provided by the mother nature where the mother nature placed a tooth and that tooth remained functional for decades of life. The same guidance is immediately available to you with a very favorable bone around it and at the apex. And multiple visits are not required. All the healing potential of the body. You don't cut the mucosa, periosteum, half of the blood supply to the bone is probably from the mucoperiosteum. So you don't cut the mucoperiosteum, extract the tooth or place the implant through the mucosa and the healing potential of the body remains there for healing of the implant. The basic principles of the surgery remains the same and they are there. Lesser the surgical time, better the results. Lesser the trauma, better the results. For the lesser time, you expose the open wound to the environment of the oral cavity, saliva, better will be the results and you don't cut the tissues, you don't cut the blood supply, better will be the results. So there are so many benefits in the aesthetic zone, you can bend the implants from the neck and change it to the desired angle but you have to go unidirection only. You can't bend and come back, you can once bend it or bending key is available, very easily they are bent. For the parallelism, you can even bend them. Immediate loading is possible. For in today's time, in three hours, if you are going for digital and you are using scan bodies, you scan the image, send it to the lab. Within one hour, the lab will fabricate the crowns or the fixed partial denture, and you can cement it back. And then you can delay the permanent crowns for three months, six months, eight months, and the loading will help the bone formation, woven bone formation around the implants. Osseointegration is not required in case of smooth implants. Longer implants are possible, and the neck of the implant stays through the mucosa, and the implant engages the bone up to the length of the bone av uh, available. Bicortical fixation is usually preferred one cortex is on the crystal side, other is, in this case, around the neurovascular bundle. All the cavities, all the important structures have been 
covered by the mother nature by a cortical, very solid bone. Even the bone around the sinus is very solid. So you engage that bone with the tip of the implant, so bicortical fixation is there for immediate loading. Now, <clears throat> for the younger colleagues, please don't be alarmed when you see a radiograph or OPG like this one, where you see an implant crossing the inferior alveolar nerve. पहली अटैम्प्ट में ये ना कह दीजिए खास तौर पे एग्जाम में आपने जाना है बाहर जाना है कि ये तो नर्व को डैमेज कर दिया गया है। With the three D C B C T, now it's possible to know where buccolingually the nerve lies. The nerve and the blood vessel in the mandible comes from inside and diagonally, diagonally, कली की moves outside. It emerges from the mental foramen. So we know the location of it. With the help of CBCT, you can be accurate uh, about it and you can place an implant either buccal or lingual to the nerve, especially in the seven region and especially in the region of four and five. So here in this case, the implant appears to be crossing the nerve, blood vessel, but in fact, these are buccal and engaging the buccal cortical plate. Cortical bone engagement is the real concept for immediate loading. Parallelism has to be kept in mind, surgical guides, either digital or manual or even the conventional dentures, they can be utilized, the methods are available. <coughs> uh, immediate uh, loading in the posterior mandible is even possible, then you can do <coughs> your planning on the basis of the OPG. Uh, implants has to be parallel and they can be bent from the neck to make them parallel. Uh, you can uh, prepare the natural teeth as well, uh, use scan bodies on the implants and use the conventional scanning for the teeth and you can have temporary crowns within hours. For the maxilla, immediate extraction, immediate implant placements, again two pterygoid uh, implants placed and they have been made parallel by bending from the neck. In one case it's around 25 degree, in other case it's very mild and the processes. Again, another case, the planning phase start from the study model, study cost, and uh, study cost is a, is a tool available with the dentist who plans any processes, including implants, they must be made. They help you a lot in many ways. Now the digital costs are available, you all know it and digital planning is possible. The workflow by various uh, implant companies and uh, digital designing softwares are available. You can have the most favorable one and plan the implants and the process even. Now the basic concept is that the bone is thin and narrow, especially in the case of periodontal disease, in the congenital uh, malformations, anodontias, and that thin bone used to be reconstructed by bone augmentation, which is an unnatural phenomena. It has been practiced, it's being practiced, where required it should be utilized, but if we can avoid that. So we make the implants narrow at the neck, which emerges through the very narrow bone, but the basic concept is bicortical engagement, engagement of the cortical bone at the bottom also. <clears throat> in the second last uh, picture, you can see the implant is going into the sinus. So these implants are smooth implants. Their smooth heads will not invite infection. And up to one millimeter, you can go into the sinus even. People have proven it. We can debate on it. Even in the mandible, if you see, on the buccal side of the uh, neurovascular bundle, the implant has been placed. These are the diagrammatic pictures, but the narrow, uh, aggressive threaded implants in the smooth version of it with a meticulous planning can be easily placed and they can be immediately loaded. Uh, I go back to late great father of implant dentistry, Professor Brennemark, who used to say that it's basically the loading which will fail an implant. The protocols of uh, implant placement, if followed, most of the implants will be successful. So as a prosthodontist, I would say you should look for the teeth first. Patient comes to us for the replacement of the teeth. So think about the teeth first, 
then plan for the implant, and then place the teeth. Thank you very much. Honored ma'am, welcome. Can, can we have individual uh, restored teeth, uh, the, the crowns on them, or do they have to be conjoined? <coughs> Fine, ma'am. Uh, the question is that, do we need to individually crown the tooth, or we can supplant these two uh, teeth? If the implants are neighboring implants, we can supplant the implants. That supplanting concept is different from the natural teeth. We can't supplant more than two teeth and there too, we are reluctant to supplant uh, in most of the situations. But ma'am, in implants, if we are parallel, we can supplant the implants very easily. That is preferred, that adds to anchorage, uh, provided the implants are parallel, the loads are parallel. So in segments, I would like to supplant the implants in one arch, at least in three segments. One for the interior, two for the posterior. Supplantage is preferred wherever possible, but implant, is not preferred to be supplanted to the natural tooth as we all know it. Uh, in the anterior region, selectively, we may opt for that. Because you see the pictures that uh, the gentleman showed yesterday, he had about, because he was talking about the basal implant, so he was, he had 29 millimeter plus implants put in everywhere. And he had eight in the interior segment from the mental form to the other one. And then he had about eight at the back. And he was, he emphasized, because he was doing mostly complete dentures. So he emphasized that they have to be splinted, otherwise you will have problems. So I was just wondering whether this is the case when we have situation well, like uh, you. Well, ma'am, I am practicing uh, mono implants for the two years, and I have safely placed more than 1,000 implants in the last two years. Uh, missing lateral implant, missing lateral incisors, congenitally missing lateral incisors or lateral incisor lost due to anything would need a single crown. Very easily we can place it. Missing premolars, we have immediately loaded and none of them has failed. In fact, the concept of mono implants and smooth version of it is different from the osseointegration. It is not osseointegration implant. It is engagement of the bone and bicortical engagement of the bone. At least two cortices has to be involved. One is the crystal, other may be the floor of the sinus, may be the bottom of the mandible, and that, that's why longer implants are preferred. The tip of the implant should not be in the cancellous bone, it has to be in the cortical bone. And single implants can be placed in the molars. We have done so many implants, immediate extraction of the first molar, maxillary or mandible, and immediate implant placement after three months we load it with the permanent and immediately we load it with the temporary crown. Uh, in my experience, I... Ma'am, it depends where the second cortex lies. If it is 21 millimeter away, I will prefer 21 millimeter implant. Uh, I have used uh, Freedent, Camlock during my training in Turkey. I have been using Strawman, one of the wonderful implants which I love it, but its supply chain was not good in Pakistan. I have used Brennemark, uh, this, sorry, this, which uh, was <coughs> by Horizon for decade. Uh, again, because of the company failure, we left it. But my success rate with the mono implants is better than all those implants in my case, in my personal opinion. I'm not promoting any company at the moment. I'm not sponsored by any company. I'm using implant by a company, which I prefer and which I don't disclose here. But personally, in my experience, these implants have a better success rate. And in my opinion, I think uh, the younger lot can research, uh, uh, involvement to research in this area. When you do immediate implants, the success rate is even better. If I get a case where extraction has been done, I prefer to place the Im implant after third week, in the third week the bone, I find, is more conducive. 
and you don't need to cut the bone too much. Just prepare once, go to the apex, and the threads will immediately engage. The vertical position of this implant is very critical in terms of bicortical fixation as well as the coronal margin also. So the prosthodontic thought should be there in the back of the mind when you are placing the implant. Uh, thank, thank you very you. much. Sir, how, for how long do you keep this uh, temporary prosthesis in this case? Well, uh, as we are not going for osseo integration, three months is enough time. Even for two, after two months you can do it. People come from abroad uh, in my uh, practice and when they come, sometimes they prefer immediate permanent solution. And we have done it. A gynecologist from Sindh, she has a home in Islamabad, uh, I will not name naturally, but she said I need an implant and permanent, I cannot come again, I am very busy. So immediate CAD CAM zirconia crowns were placed, I took a promise from her that you will visit after six months and one year will evaluate. After one year the bone level, the gingival level were perfect, I never felt the change to replace it. But normally we wait for three months. In three months the woven bone is normally made. And we also take care of the systemic health of the patient. Vitamin D deficiency is very common. And there's no harm. For me, CBCT is rarely needed, but vitamin D uh, level for any person above 40 years of age or who is having a sedentary lifestyle is more important because vitamin D is the currency which will catch the calcium and induce the healing. Sir, uh, we have a problem here in Hyderabad. We don't have good uh, labs in Hyderabad. No? So we have to send these cases for, to Karachi for the fabrication. So how, uh, how much we can wait uh, you know, from the placement of implant till the temporary uh, prosthesis uh, fabrication? What is the maximum limit available to load those implants with the temporary? Dr. Mahmood was very kind with your kind courtesy to make me reach here in two hours <laughs> from <laughs> airport. So uh, I think you are well placed. Uh, um, Hyderabad is very near to Karachi. And uh, 24 hours, 48 mm. hours, even three days people are very happy. Mm. Uh, nowadays using mask is very easy. So if there is an interior crown and you, you get crown in 48 hours, and you can request the patient to wear a mask and in 48 hours you place the crown. And I, I will prefer CAD CAM fabricated temporary crowns. They are very accurate, they are uh, precise and their material is stronger than the conventional acrylic. In fact, uh, the gentleman said that he usually repla uh, places temporaries after three days because he waits till the Obviously, when you do extensive surgery, there may be some swelling, some changes. So he like wants that that should settle, and then he makes the temporary crowns. And of course, they make it with CAD CAM. A, a little point that these implants, they provide you impression copings, and then the healing abutments, healing caps, they call it, greenish colored. Healing cap should be immediately placed that the soft tissue should not grow over it. And when you take the impression coping along with the impression, I usually use alginate for pickup impressions for, because alginate is easy. Impression is there in the coping, the rest of the area is not required. You place the analog into it, pour the cast and you place the healing cap there. It is important that it click fits as the coping uh, fitting is required. Healing cap should be placed if you place temporary crown even after, after three days, four days, the fit will be perfect and CAD CAM crowns are definitely preferred over the conventional acrylic crowns. For temporization, uh, temporary cements I will prefer, but if somebody has to go abroad, I will like to use permanent cement, you can use GAC. But in case of that, when the patient comes, you may feel difficulty in uh, removing the crown because the, the abutment of these implants are a bit, a bit rough. Made, they were designed so, so that they catch the uh, cement. So at that time you have to cut the crown and for permanent crown, till the permanent crown you may be in trouble. So locally the temporary cement, it works very well. Thank you. And thank you Dr. Nurul Wahab uh, for all the help, <laughs> quick help in the absence of the IT man. <laughs> uh, Dr. Sadak Ali, please.
Well, uh, very challenging question in the presence of Dr. Dhanan Aslam, Dr. Noor Lubhab, and um, so many maxilla fish surgeons. Uh, bisphosphonates, in my opinion, uh, we conduct a course together with Dr. Dhanan Aslam, and he elaborates uh, on this topic very, uh, very in, in, in a detail. Injectable bisphosphonates, we should try to avoid implants. Oral bisphosphonates, you can go for implants, but we have to take the informed consent. For our younger colleagues, uh, implant cases, you should always have a consent form, duly signed by the patient, one of the attendants, the doctor, and maybe one of your colleague, in which everything is written. Say if the patient is taking oral bisphosphonates and you select the patient for implants, patient should be informed that chances of failure are more than the healthy individuals. So for the oral bisphosphonates, we can. For injectables, uh, the Sir, time uh, duration is also there. Okay. For injectables, waiting up to one year is recommended. For oral bisphosphonates, even two months waiting is possible uh, if there's no other signs of, bis uh, uh, I mean, the complication of the bisphosphonates. Uh, I think uh, our dental colleagues in the medical universities, they should make it highlighted at the medical forum uh, that Bisphosphonate should not be so frankly prescribed. Uh, the complications, we know it. Maxwell Fisher the surgeon know it better. Uh, they, that should be made aware to the physicians who are very frank in prescribing bisphosphonates. Uh, I, 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 I don't say that they should not be prescribed, but we should be selective because complications are there and patients don't know those complications. Uh, sir. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for, for very enlightened lecture. Uh, we need a bit guidance about the removable prosthesis. If we want to go for the, for example, for the implant supported complete denture, over denture, can we use again the mono implants because there will be different attachments and there will be no splinting of the uh, abutments? And second, if we want to go for the screw retained prosthesis, then uh, because they are made for the cement retained only. Uh, can we provide the screw retained Sorry, prosthesis? sorry uh, implantology is a very vast field. Now, I, I now inform that I use the mono Swiss implants by the uh, Swiss implant system. They have screw retained prosthesis implants also, and they have a range of overdenture attachment also. BioHorizon has that. Stroman has that. There are other companies also. So all the mechanisms can be involved. But conventional cement retained implants in this case are simpler because the concepts of FP1, fixed processes 1, FP2, FP3, RP1, RP2, they will not fit conventionally in these cases. So they give you an advantage, these implants, to use cement retained processes in most of the cases, but implant systems with mono implants, secure retained crowns, and overdenture uh, uh, mechanism, the same, same with the, which is available with the two-piece implants, are available. Only advantage is you extract the tooth, or otherwise you place an implant, and the patient is ready for processes immediately. Azad Bhai. Sir. Uh, <laughs> I just want to understand that this concept of uh, basal bone a basal cortical bone in involvement and it should be on both sides. So my first question is that shouldn't be uh, CBCT guided supplements, those are going to guide it rather than our own judgment, number one. What is your opinion about it? Number two, uh, these type of implants have got, looks like uh, mechanical retention rather than later on becomes osteointegrated. Number three, these implants looks angulated and the uh, abutment portion is like can be angulated, can be rotated on a 25 degree angle as well. So later on with the masticatory forces, if that coronal portion can be rotated. Isn't it that it, the, if it is not osteointegrated, only mechanical adhesion is there, 
So Thanks. the whole abutment is going to be rotated as well. Thank you, sir. It looks like titanium four implants. Titanium four is the bone uh, type sir. of. Type. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We learn from the questions and uh, questions from the teachers. I have the honor. Professor Asif Shah was one of the examiners when I appeared in my exam, and I was the first fellow. Uh, along with Dr. Sajjan Naim, because I was senior, so CPSB declared me the first fellow. Uh, Dr. Professor Asif Shah was one of the examiners there. Uh, bicortical fixation. The concept is bicortical fixation. Now, I asked the same question in 2013 in Miami to Professor Carl Misch. I have done master course with uh, Carl Misch thrice, prosthodontic one and the implant one also. That CBCT was new there, and my concern was that CBCT was not available to us, frankly, our patients. So he said, you do CBCT with palpation. There are four basic principles of clinical examination everywhere in the world, as a physician, as a surgeon, as a dentist. Visual inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation. And we dentists need auscultation many a times. But the palpation is so important. Uh, I remember Professor Tariq Zaman Sahib, on whom Allah unko ke rahmat kare, saying that put your eye into your index finger. It's so important. Professor Carl Mish said, do uh, bone mapping was very common in those days. You make a cast and do the bone mapping. He said, do bone mapping and CBCT with your fingers. They directly communicate to your brain. And when you're doing the implant, place those fingers there. He used to do implants at testal level, at the middle, and at the bottom, he will hold his finger of one hand, thumb and finger. And when the implant, he's placing the implant, the fingers are there. He said, my fingers guide my brain to do this, nothing like human brain. Till today, the computers may claim to have an edge, but the human brain is superior. We know we use a petty part of our brain during whole of our life. So I think the human capabilities are beyond, beyond anything. I, once I had the honor to stay with M.M. Alam Saab as roommate in P.F. Sargoda, and he says that the bullets are when we have fire karni hoti while moving at a very high speed. At that time, we saw that Allah has given our brain what has given us. He would never claim I have done it. But human brain is far capable, number one. Number two, there's no harm in getting CBCT. In our setup, sir, the patient is not able to pay the cost because we will not pay the cost of the CBCT. The CBCT should be taken. I don't, I'm not against it. Digital surgical supplement, they are being made, they are being utilized, and they are very helpful. But if the patient cannot afford it, so the conventional wisdom should not be left. Even in United States of America, in their higher centers of implant placement. They are using high-tech technology investigations, but they are relying more towards the investigations, and they are, even them, they are missing the basic instincts of the human mind by thorough clinical examination. So whatever we have learned, we should utilize it. Second is about uh, the concept of osseointegration. Sir, this is not integration. This is the engagement in the bone, आपने जमीन के अंदर सीमेंट एक होल के अंदर फिल किया और उसके अंदर एक थ्रेडेड इम्प्लांट प्लेस कर दिया सीमेंट सेट हो जाएगा और इम्प्लांट को आप पुल नहीं कर सकते वोवन बोन विल बी मेड एट एज ए हीलिंग प्रोसेस व्हिच वी ऑल नो एंड ऑस्ट्रो इंटीग्रेशन इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड दैट्स व्हाई द इम्प्लांट्स आर स्मूथ एंड स्मूथ इम्प्लांट्स व्हिच द द सरफेस ट्रीटेड इम्प्लांट्स विल इनवाइट द बोन सेल्स टू ग्रो they will also invite the infection to grow when you are going for the immediate implants. There is some residual infection in the bone. That's why the endo has failed. And that's why we are removing the bone. So the smooth implants, they don't let the bacteria to creep onto the surface. And they are uh, against it. There are implants available with many systems, including the monosuous implants, which are rough, but their tip is, they call it, they're called BOT implants. The tip is smooth. So if you have to go into the infected area or if you have to go one millimeter into the sinus as per their protocols, the smooth portion will go. It will not invite infection and the bone will grow with it. I have seen scores of cases where the bone grows along the implant 
and make a doom in the sinus without bone lift, bone, bone uh, augmentation, but up to one millimeter. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Now, I would like to call, request respected panelists to please come forward and present the souvenirs to respected speakers. Now, I would like to call Dr. Afi Fumar to please come on stage and receive. Now, I would like to request Dr. Sadiq Ali to please come on, on stage and receive your souvenir. Last but not least, I would like to request Brigadier Azad Ali Azad. Sir, please come on stage and receive your souvenir. Thank you so much, sir. Now you may take your respective seats. नहीं तेरा नशेमन कसरे सुल्तानी के गुंबद पर नहीं तेरा नशेमन कसरे सुल्तानी के गुंबद पर तू शाहीन है बसेरा कर पहाड़ों की चटानों पर लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू द कंक्लूडिंग सेशन ऑफ फिफ्थ लम्स एंड नाइन्थ पीपीए इंटरनेशनल डेंटल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ अवर ऑर्गेनाइजर्स एंड कोलेबरेटर्स I would like to thank you all for your precious time and attendance here. We are honored to have Professor Maksud Ahmed Sumro, Head of Department of Prostodontics of Isra University and Hospital Hyderabad as Chief Guest and Professor Nasir Shah, Dean of Khyber College of Dentistry Peshawar as Guest of Honor and Professor Asif Ali, Principal of Rashid Latif Dental College, Lahore, as a special guest for today's concluding session. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives us an immense pleasure to hold the concluding session of conference, which includes distribution of awards among those who have worked with great zeal to organize successfully this great event. The conference, besides scientific deliberation, has given us an opportunity for reunion of dental graduates, which certainly has revived old memories and cherished moments full of energy, youth, and passions. Before further proceedings, I would like to thank LUMS Web TV and LUMS FM TV. Their team did great work. And all the details of today's conference are available at the YouTube and FB page of theirs. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have the honor of requesting respected chairman of organizing committee, Professor Dr. Amir Mahmoud Bhatt, Professor Dr. Rizwan Mehman, to escort our worthy chief guest, Professor Maksud Ahmed Sumro, Head of Prosthodontic Department, Isra University, Hyderabad. Guest of Honor, Professor Nasir Ali Shah, Dean of Khyber College of Dentistry. And our special guest, Professor Asif Ali Shah, Principal of Rashid Latif Dental College, Lahore. 
Sir, please come up on stage and take your respective seats. Dentistry is a field of innovation and for innovation, research is a basic step. The scientific researchers have played a vital role in bringing new concepts and ideas that have gained recognition. In this conference, a number of researchers have presented their original work and experiences. I would like to call upon Professor Mohammad Rizwan Mehman, Secretary of Conference, to present an overview of conference and for vote of thanks. Sir, please come forward. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Uh, Excellency, Honorable Chief Guest, uh, Professor Maksud Ayman Sumro, Guest of Honor, Professor Nasir Ali Shah, and uh, the next guest of honor, uh, Asif Ali Shah Saab, and the uh, chairman organizing committee, Professor Amir Mahmood, but assalamu alaikum and good afternoon. As this conference has come to its end, I deem it a great pleasure and my privilege to offer the vote of thanks on behalf of my entire team. Uh, let me first of all start by giving glory to the Almighty who made us sufficient enough to be able to make this occasion a resounding success by high spirit and success and courage. Uh, total in this conference, 20 speakers uh, from national and internationally presented their lectures and their works and total 13 workshops uh, that started from the 9th November and will be continued till the 30th November of this month on various topics are being organized. Dr. Nafij from Malaysia, Dr. Fahim Wara from Saudi Arabia, Dr. Ab Adil Abushar from Palestine, Dr. Shadi Ayman Musa from Qatar, and Dr. Bilal Javed Malik from the London. And many speakers from the Pakistan facilitated the workshops on various topics. Ladies and gentlemen, while the needs of Kalak racing to catch up with each other, it gives me immense pleasure to show my gratitude to all the dignitaries and uh, appreciate their efforts for joining us in this event. I am highly grateful to all the excellencies, our respectable chief guest, guest of honor, organizing committee, our respectable speakers, my colleagues, our students, supporting staff, and each and every person who have graced us with their presence and have taken out their valuable time to be a part of this huge occasion. Last but not at the least, I would like to say that behind the curtain of this remarkable success, there is undoubtedly the efforts and contribution of many people who work day and night diligently uh, to make it possible. I would like to request you all to give them a huge round of applause. I also want to express my gratitude to our institute for always being there for us and having our backs. Being a secretary of this conference management team, I would like to conclude this session and with the hope that everyone has enjoyed it to their fullest and hopefully we will gather soon again, inshallah. Thank you. Now, I would like to thank Dr. Bilal Malik and Dr. Sufyan and Healthcare Company for facilitating advanced Botox workshop and making our workshop successful. The Botox session today is brought up to you by Healthcare Company. Healthcare is an organization working on the field of dentistry, facial aesthetics, and research for past two years. 
Healthcare have conducted numerous courses all around the country and have recently collaborated with LUMS. Today's Botox is a result of their collaboration. Dr. Bilal Malik graduated from Foundation University Medical College, Islamabad, Pakistan in year 2007 and now he has moved to UK. He worked in various acute emergency roles across private hospitals as an accident and emergency specialist from 2011 to 2017. And now he has extended his scope of work into the world of aesthetics. He is currently involved in providing aesthetics treatment at clinics in Greater Manchester, Harley Street, London and Cheshire area. He is a CEO sculptured by doctors which has a vision to bring quality professionals treatments to the clients. He has also got involved in training and developing courses for other doctors and nurses and is affiliated to Aesthetic Palace Training Institute. Apart from his experience and expertise in all the mainstream procedures, he is also a hair transplant surgeon, has a special interest in dermatology, non-surgical facelift. He has been training internationally in recent years and has recently been appointed as a brand ambassador and trainer for an award-winning aesthetics product in UK. Thank you a lot, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to present souvenir to conference organizers. For distribution of souvenir, I would like to call our worthy chief guest, Professor Maksud Ahmed Sumro, Head of Prosthodontic Department, Istra University, Hyderabad. Guest of Honor, Professor Nasser Ali Shah, Dean Khaber Codentristy. And our special guest, Professor Asif Ali Shah, Principal of Rashid Latif Dental College, Lahore. Sir, please come forward and do the honor of presenting awards. First of all, I would like to call Dr. Bilal Malik. Sir, please come on stage and receive your award. Now, I would like to request Dr. Alia from Healthcare Company. Ma'am, please come forward and receive your award. Now, I would like to request Chairperson Organization Committee, Dr. Amir Mahmoud Bhatt, to please come forward and receive your souvenir. I would like to request Dr. Sufyan, who is also the facilitator of Health Cure Company, Please come and receive your award. Now, I would like to request co-chairman of our association, Dr. Abdul Qadir Dal. Sir, please come on the stage and receive your award. Now, I would like to request Secretary of International Conference, Professor Dr. Rizwan Memin, to please come forward and receive your souvenir. Now, I would like to request coordinator Dr. Irfan Ahmad Sheikh. Sir, please come on stage and receive your award. Dr. 
आप आगे नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट कमेटी चेयरपर्सन साइंटिफिक सेशन प्रोफेसर काशिफ अली चनर टू प्लीज कम अपॉन स्टेज एंड रिसीव योर सवेनी ही इज नॉट देयर Now I would like to request registration and kit distribution owner Dr. D- Abdul Jabbar Baloch sir please come on stage and receive your award Now I would like to request stage committee head Professor Dr. Munir Ahmed Banglani to please come up on stage and receive your swaney Now I would like to request Trade and Exhibition Department Dr Sunil Kumar sir please come on stage and receive your award Now I would like to request Head of Publication and Kit Fabrication Dr Muhammad Muslim to please come up on stage Now I would like to request Head of Information Technology Mr Azhar Akbar Memon to please come up on stage and receive your award here Now I would like to request Head of Poster Exhibition Department Dr Sikandar Memon sir please come on stage Now I would like to request accommodation and transport manager Dr Mansoor Channa sir please come on stage Now I would like to request focal person conference secretable Dr Usama Sheikh to please come on stage and receive your souvenir Now I would like to request workshop committee manager Dr Hina Clark Memon ma'am please come on stage Ladies and gentlemen the moment has reached the part- participants have been eagerly waiting now we announce the winners of poster competition and quiz competition who have received great appreciations of the participants of the event so the first winner of quiz competition is dow international dental college Their winner prize is twenty thousand. Second position goes to Hamdard College of Medicine and Dentistry, Karachi. and their winner prize is 15000 third position goes to bakai university karachi and the winner prize is 
Now I will also request other participants of LUMS to please come on stage and receive your award of participation. I would also call Bhittai Dental Colleges. Please come on stage and receive your award of participation. I would request BB Aswa Dental College. Please come on stage, focal person of BB Aswa Dental College. Please come on stage and receive your award. Now we will move to the winners of poster competition. First position goes to Dr. Bhavna from Lakat University of Medical and Health Sciences. Second position goes to Dr. Tehmur from BB Aswa Dental College, Larkana. And we have two winners for third position. So third position goes to Dr. Ramsha from Dow International College and Dr. Naresh from Bhittai, Medical, Bhittai Dental College. Thank you, Thank so, you so much, much sir. Now you may take your respective seats. Ladies and gentlemen, the success of this conference is due to the remarkable efforts of many volunteers who have worked with the great enthusiasm and dedication. To make this event memorable, I request you all to please give them a huge round of applause. Now, I would like to request Professor Asif Alisha, sir, please come on stage for an important announcement. Pakistan Prosthodontist Association has got uh, history and the values 
that every year we change the venue and we started our journey from Lahore and visited all over Pakistan, Islamabad, Karachi, Quetta, Hyderabad and this time after the Hyderabad we are going to switch over to the next station. For this purpose, for the announcement, important announcement, I will request Professor Dr. Nadia Yazdani to please come over the stage and announce the next venue and the next president responsibility and having a handed over ceremony from Pakistan Prostodontic Association from Hyderabad to the next station and that is Madam. Hello, hello, hello. Bismillah rahman rahim Like they say, all good things have to come to an end. And so, today we have come to the end of the most exciting uh, activity, which was your scientific sessions. Two days of hectic activity, and then the gala night, and now the concluding ceremony. So before we conclude, we have, we have a representative from Islamabad who has also been the PRAS president of the PPA. And under his leadership, we have had two conferences. One was in Islamabad and the other was in Quetta. So I think he is going, he's very experienced and knows how to run the association and how to do, to do all the good work. I now call upon Brigadier Azad Ali Azad to take over the charge from Professor Amir Bhatt for he is the president elect for next year. Professor Azad, heartiest congratulations, but at the same time, you have a big responsibility. It is always good to have a title, but with the title comes a lot of responsibility. And I think he knows what the responsibilities are because the bar has been raised by Hyderabad uh, by Professor Amir Bhatt. And therefore, he has to raise the bar yet again for the next president-elect. So may I request you to please come over and say a few words about your responsibilities and your future plans. Thank you. Bismillah rahman rahim uh, One thing we forgot, while traveling all through Pakistan, we missed a station, Peshawar, and our beloved teacher, colleague, and a gentleman, Professor fazl e home. Marhoum. Allah Ta'ala unko jannat mein jaga de. What a wonderful contributor he was towards the profession and towards the fraternity. Uh, Hyderabad was a decision made jointly. I, I feel PPA is exemplary in this regard that the consultations, discussions, mashwe mein khair hoti hai. We do and generally with consensus we decide. I was a bit reluctant initially, uh, although I had opportunity to work under the guidance of my seniors, Professor Nazir Ishdani, Professor Fazl Ghani Saab, Professor Asif Shah Saab and with my colleagues, uh, we have run uh, two, two sessions of uh, PPA, one in 2013-14, while we conducted an international conference at Nast Islamabad, and second in Quetta, where most of you are present. 
but uh, uh, as the responsibility has been given with the able leadership of my elders and inshallah with the support of our teams and with the standards set by Hyderabad this time, congratulations Hyderabad or aapki leadership ke saath saath, I think the younger team member, they deserve appreciation because without them it was not possible. So wonderful, the young leaders, future is yours and inshallah we will try to come up to the expectations of our elders as well as colleagues and uh, we will take PPA to the newer heights. Uh, few things which our fraternity is already doing, uh, MDS programs are being uh, strengthened uh, academically. At CPSP, our assessment protocol is being changed to the Royal College pattern. I am thankful to Dr. Ali here and uh, Dr. Majid Zia from, uh, uh, from Aptabad, who were the main contributors with the help of the team that our fellows, when they complete their training, they appear in FCPS exam, the same day they can appear in the Royal College exams, on the same preparation. And we will change the pattern, it has been approved, of CPSP examination in the way that our candidates is enriched with the clinical training as well as academic training for that exam. So, inshallah, on all fronts, we'll be, uh, keep up uh, our work and uh, we are thankful to Dr. Amir Bhatt as well as our past president, Dr. Hina Zafar Raja. She was a wonderful uh, contributor in her own way and uh, she uh, raised the levels of academics, professionalism in this fraternity to a much better level. Inshallah, Islamabad, Team Islamabad will come up with your support to a better level, Inshallah. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. I would also like to add that under the auspices of the Pakistan Prosthodontic Association, the teamwork we have able and managed to become a member of the Asian Association of Prosthodontics, which is another big association from Asia. President Alex Saab, you are sitting on the No, no, I have to finish it. Come, please. Please do us the honor. So being, the, uh, being a member of the Asian uh, 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 Academy of Prosthodontists means that we are very much a part of the member. The neighboring country had taken over this association and we thought it is the right time that with you people around us, we can take on this uh, challenge as well. And now we are the members and we have got three positions there. There is a president there. There is a position there. One president ki hai, ek. Uh -huh. it, there is one is the research component and we are, uh, Dr. Hina is there, I am the president repre uh, representing Pakistan there and then Tisa Kondhamara. There is another portfolio bhi hume mila hai, which is a um, very important portfolio. So we are trying to straighten out the creases for use people and we want that you guys should have a very smooth sailing um, and just move forward and raise the flag of Pakistan and the association high. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I have been uh, asked to do the honors of closing this uh, scientific session and I close the session Thank you all so much for being here till the last moment. I really appreciate your participation and your interest. And thank you for your hospitality, your love, respect, regard, and every minor details that you people have taken, uh, considered us. Uh, I would like to thank the president and his team for looking after us so well and making us stay so comfortable. Thank you all. God bless you. Pakistan, Zindabad. <laughs>